ICF Interim Lightweight World Title. Introducing your first challenger, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 10 wins and 5 losses. He stands 180 centimeters tall and weighs already 69.96 kilograms. Representing Arlen MMA Pro Team and fighting out of Kazlarda, Kazakhstan. Please welcome challenger number one, Ojas Kipshak Eskayev. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man the big martial artist with a professional record of 18 wins, three losses, and one no contest. He stands 178 centimeters tall and weighs already 70.06 kilograms. Representing Sport Club Elas and fighting on a Bishkek Kyrgyzstan. Please welcome challenger number two, Abdi Salam Ulu Ovak Kupan Ichbek. For fighter instructions, the band. Jackie Larkin. Brave Combat, Brave Combat Federation has lit a roaring fire, fanned the flames, threw some gasoline on it, and they just put two sticks of dynamite into it. Brave Nation, it's about to blow up. Let's make some noise. Fighter instructions were going to be interesting there. Two lads from Kyrgyzstan listening to a lad from Balaki give instructions. I'm sure that made a lot of sense to them. What an incredible fight and prospect here. Dickie Larkin is your man in the middle, one of the best in the business. This for the title. Both these men incredibly tough. Kubanichbek's ring intelligence, which is a thing, is very, very high. Fight IQ, it yeah. takes most fighters a minute to two minutes to see where their opponent's at. He's closer to 15 seconds. But Iskariev cannot be discounted. He is as tough as they come. I've been in the workout room with him. He is incredibly strong. Again, very smart. But again, Kubanichbek just has that X factor, that intangible, that thing that makes him so dangerous and, and such a formidable opponent inside the Brave Arena. Looks like he's trying to load up the right hand to parlay that into the shot. Circling now to keep his foot in the outside of his opponent's foot. When he gets that and he gets the distance he wants, he's going to let that hand go. Iskariev needs to be wary of walking into that right hand. If he's forced to circle out to his left hand side, which is the power side of Kubanichbek, he could get caught with that big right hand. Iskariev tried to land that jab over the shoulder. Very, very tough. When you're a southpaw and your opponent's in an orthodox stance, can be done, but tough, tough, tough to do. Yeah, you kind of need to pat down that lead hand in order to land your jab. Very smart to go to the body. Get your opponent's attention down a little bit. It's that much easier to land that shot to the head. And at fighters at this level, that shot to the head can end it on the spot. Especially with these little four-ounce gloves. You know, the guard that you would have in the likes of boxing or in the likes of Muay Thai is different because the glove will absorb a lot of the punishment. It's just not the case. We've seen it with kickboxers who try and transition to MMA. They leave these little pockets, these little gaps. Beautiful shot to the body there from Kuban Ichbek. What you saw right there, Phil, that's a champion's mark. When somebody does something to you, you do it back to them better. He's now getting Eskariev to bite on his feints a little bit. Didn't land flush, but that right hand is dangerous. Both these men trying to soften up the body. Lead uppercut to straight combination from Kubanichbek. Seems the game plan is to soften up the body here for, for both men. Both men are, are they're mirroring taking one another. The full, they're taking the full measure of each other. They're mirroring. You do it to me, yeah. I'm going to do it to you. Nice lead, looping hook. Each of these fighters has supreme confidence in their skill. Oh, huge shot over the top into the takedown from Kuban Ichbek. And this is where he really flourishes. This is where he does his best work. This is where he is at his most formidable and dangerous. Was in in a high crotch. It was denied the first time. It looks like it was the second time as well. Nice work from Iskariev to 
defend the takedown. I did see him in the workout room working a lot of get-ups and working a lot of takedown defense with his training partners. Very wise man, and that was a very wise elbow to the forehead from Omak. Great head positioning now. It's these subtle little things that Kuba Nitschbeck does that belay that he is such a good fighter. There it is. But Iskariev again getting right back up to his feet or at least attempting to do so. Doing the right things. Pressuring the head. Hoping where the head goes, the body follows. And Kuba Nitschbeck may be cut over the eye here. Kuba Nitschbeck is cut over the eye. I did not see an elbow land it may have been one of those shots a little bit earlier Potential. in the fight it's also possible there was a cut during training and it opened up another strong possibility is an accidental clash of heads mm. this is all conjecture though we i didn't see it land doesn't seem to be a massive impediment over the eye right now it seems to be more to the side excellent giraffe fighting from omak the use of that head is so important. The head becomes a third hand if it's used properly. Denies the opponent the full use of his core. Escorea very wisely, I think, separates. Oh, that cut is just above the eye, actually. If Escorea can zero in on that, I'd love to see if we can possibly replay of where that cut happened, where it opened up. The doctors will surely be in in, the sec or in between rounds to get a look at that. Nice head kick coming from the south pole. Oh, yes. Needs to be wary of leaning in when he throws that looping hook. Again, the take down from Kuba and each back. Phil Omak is fighting with a little bit more vigor. He, he may be worried about that cut. Ten seconds. One hook's in. Yeah. Closing stance of the round, but nice work by Skaryev. Finishes the, the, the round on top in the eyes of the judges. All right, call it, Phil. Who'd you like in that round? 10-9, 9-10. An incredibly close round, but if I had to split them by a hair, I would say just for the, the, the positional control, I would have to go Kuba each bag. Your thoughts, Gary? I'm going to split it. I'm going to go the other way for the oh, simplest thing in combat sports, and that's damage. damage. If you're not sure who won, ask yourself a simple question. Who hurt who more? By that standard, I have Olyas Eskareyev up 10-9. Phil's got it 9-10 for Abdi Salam Kubanich back. Doesn't matter anyways because we're not official judges, just having a little bit of fun trying to get you, Brave Nation, to think about who won this round. As you can see by our opponents, could have gone either way. But all in all, very good showing by both fighters. The big worry, of course, is that cut. Oh, the there's, Brave there's Nation. The, there it was. There it was, Carrick. There was accidental the accidental clash of heads. Accidental head. clash of heads just skimmed one another as Kubanitsbek was the one who was initiating the takedown. Thanks to our great production team here for finding that, putting that in front of us. Brave Nation, cuts can cause a lot of blood and not be dangerous. They can cause a little bit, but be in a spot right above a nerve and the doctors have to stop it. We don't have the expertise at this point to know one way or the other, whether that cut is very dangerous or whether it's, relatively speaking, a triviality. Decky Larkin runs a tight, tight ship. Round two just about to start. With glove touch, sign of mutual respect. Your Eskaryev, do you try and zero in on that eye, try and open that up a little bit more, make it bleed into the You sure the do, eye. and before you do that, you try and get him to think about something else. Get him to think you're trying to kick him in the legs, level change, Think you want, make him think you want to get in his hips, and then bang him right in that cut. Nice movement from Eskaryev. Oh, huge oh, uppercut. Dazzling shot, oh, he's dazzling shot, Phil. Kuban Eastbeck trying to get it done early in the second round here. Landed two big shots. Kuban Eatsbeck trying to take the back. He's very high up right now. He's well out of position to throw big shots. He does have a figure four now. Eskariev doing everything he can to try and turn in, but then again, that illustrates just how dangerous Kuban Eatsbeck, something out of nothing. Brave Nation, this figure four position, those, those locked legs around the torso is the most miserable form of control there is. It's, it, the, the ribs can hurt. It's very difficult to inhale. And of course, the opponent can put you, can threaten you with a submission or further strikes. But Iskariev doing a great job of 
turning those hips in towards Kuban Ichbek. Oh yes, Iskariev is a beast. Triangle attempt. Iskariev really is something different, isn't he? Got rocked, got put on his backside. Now he finds himself. Triangle's getting oh. close. Hasn't gotta got get it. that foot underneath the knee and then twist the body a little bit so the two bodies are not lined up. But it's getting close. That foot is now getting, now you gotta get the knee to the ankle rather than towards the toes. He's in. We've split. now got the, the, the angle between the bodies is formed. There's pressure on his foot as opposed to the shin being locked. Got to get the ankle rather than the toe part underneath that knee, and that doesn't sound like much. Believe me, it it's much. Difference. Switches to the armbar. Oh, and Iskariev is out. Fantastic, fantastic ability to wait it out, to defend by Iskariev. And we're right back up on the feet now. Oh, beautiful short elbow by Kuban Ichbek. Phil Iskariev was in a submission hold in his mind right now. He wants to put his opponent in one. Tight against the cage and Bolyas Iskariev proving that he deserves his spot here to contend for the interim lightweight championship. Kuban H. Beck consistently proving what we all know and that's that he is a very dangerous man. Take down from Kuban Ichbek. Excellent top game, making every inch his opponent move, sap a little bit more energy, throwing some shots to the head, threatening a hook. Got one in place. Opponent is now forced to keep that hip pressed up against the fence, trying to keep the other hook from going in. We get a leg grapevine briefly. Going to switch to the body triangle, it seems, has that leg flush across the hip line. 100 seconds to go. Switch, there it is, the body triangle is in. Kubanich back now very wisely looking for the underhook from the back. Trying to prevent his opponent from turning in, as we saw the last time it is. Woo! Iskariya manages to turn in for the second time. Brave Nation, that is extraordinarily hard to do from that back figure four. And now he's in the position to land ground and pound to try and open up that cut above the eye of Kuban Ichbek. But Kuban Ichbek throwing shots and elbows from the bottom, feet on the hips, trying to create distance. Oh, Iskariev in his haste to try and Get in on Kuban Ichbek has left a little pocket of space here. Kuban Ichbek slowly, methodically looking like he's working his way to take the back here, snaking that arm underneath the chin. But Skariev is so game. Every time I think Skariev is in supreme danger, somehow seconds later he's not. And we, we keep talking about how tough he is. He's also doing everything right technically. He's turning into Kuban Ichbek. He's negating the legs. He's defending the chokes. Not just tough, but also an incredibly intelligent fighter. Absolutely, Phil. Not just tough, because were it solely toughness, it wouldn't work. Kuban Ichbek hits too hard. Anybody, their biggest part of their game is that they're a game fighter, that they're really tough. They're not going to beat this man. Again in that back, back to him. In and second round ends. You want to make a call for who you thought won that round, Phil? For me, that's Kuban Ichbek taking that round again. But like you say, you have Eskariev taking the first round. So by your scorecard, you're talking a round apiece. And again, I was giving it, giving it on the very, very slimmest of margins, so all to play for going into the third and final round, Kerry. I'm very, very comfortable seeing, seeing Omak won that round. I do think he made a tactical mistake. I think when he landed those two big shots, if he had continued to throw strikes, I think it probably would have ended right there. He opted instead to switch to a wrestling game. Opponent was able to keep going. There it is, look at that. And there was a follow-up, boom! Drops his opponent again, third shot. Absolutely phenomenal, perfect shot on the temple. Little left, little right, and then what I believe was a mistaken decision. Should have stood right up, called his opponent up. I think he could have gotten the knockout right there. As we 
we'd say, all to play for going into the third and final round of this interim lightweight world championship at Brave Combat Federation 59, which has proved to be an incredible fight card showcasing some of the toughest fighters this region, this world, this planet has to offer. Touch of gloves, respect shown by both men. Who wants it more? Interesting, going back to the body again. Mayfield's opponent is tiring a little bit, or he may be trying to set up a shot to the head. My mistake, ladies and gentlemen, I misspoke saying this was the third and final round. Obviously, it being a championship fight, we have five five-minute rounds. I just get so carried away, Kerry, because I enjoy the fights. These are phenomenal fights. It's interesting, Phil Kovinichbeck, and this the third round now, seems to be getting a little bit stronger. He may be emotionally buoyed by having, we believe, won that second round, but his conditioning may be so extraordinary that he's basically just going into a second win right now. Well, as we've seen, Kovinichbeck can maintain a pace unheralded in mixed martial arts and put that pace on his opponents. Big flare double. Eskariev, in terms of conditioning, maybe fading just a little bit. Kubanichbek, anything but. It may be a strange thing to say, but the fighting style of Kubanichbek may lend itself better to these championship rounds. Yeah, he's a grinder. He's going to tire you out. He's going to hit you. Take a submission if it's there. Standing up with Kubanichbek on your back is, is a very, very tough prospect. He's probably going to take your back, probably going to slam you down again. Eskariya very wisely has his back up against that fence, wants to keep it. Going for a key lock, probably not what he wants to do right here. Again, Brave Nation, those shots to the head you're seeing, they appear to be little. And they're not fight enders, but they're 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 miserable. This is causing damage. Oh, big shot right down the pipe from Kuban each back. Oh, now elbows turning up the frequency. Elbow coming. Big big shots by Kuban each back. And again, it's really been a, a story of survival so far in the opening stanzas of this third round for Askariev. It's being ragdolled right now by Kubanichbek. Kubanichbek playing a, a top game that's smothering, keeping his opponent crunched forwards. The abdomen can't fully expand. Fighter can't breathe, making the fighter carry your weights. The legs get heavy, throwing constant shots, both to remind the judges who's winning this and to cause pain. And then you stand up, your heart starts to beat. You think you're out. Boom. Put right back on the ground again. It's heartbreaking. Momentarily, Askariev managed to get to his feet, but now he's back down, eating shots from Kubanichbek, trying to get that hook in, establish that. One hook, two hooks. Askariev needs to do everything he can to try and turn in towards Kubanichbek. Be interesting to see if Kubanichbek goes back to that figure four, that triangle on the body, which actually failed there it is. twice there he is but this time he's got that leg lace yeah he hooks the insole of his foot the back of the thigh of Iscaria. very intelligent work now got significantly better control than he did before oh we've got danger phil he is underneath the chin but Iscaria is able to defend momentarily there he looked like he was in trouble Iskariev needs to roll to the side that the triangle is locked on to alleviate some of that pressure. So he needs to roll to the opposite side. But again, still throwing punches from that position is Iskariev. A minute left with which to work for Kubanichbek. Short time now, Brave Nation. Fight is likely to play out with what we've seen here. Eskareyev, very gamely, trying to throw some shots. Very hard to get leverage when your opponent has you in back mouth. That back body triangle, 
the very definition of misery in this sport. But he is doing a good job of not remaining static, not just accepting the position and letting the inevitable happen because sometimes a position like this will break a fighter's will where he'll put himself in the choke just to get out of the fight. Brave Nation, you'll know that happens if you see the chin lift ever so slightly. One or two centimeters, chin comes up, means the fighter doesn't want to be here. That is emphatically not the case here. Eskareyev turns around. Round ends. He sure wishes he'd had a couple of seconds to yeah. get something back. Phil, any question in your mind who won that round? None whatsoever. A definitive 10-9 round for Kubanichbek, but a little bit of a moral victory there for Eskareyev just to finish the round on top momentarily and prove to himself if he finds himself in this position, he can transition into the top. Very little question now, Brave Nation, that Kubanichbek is ahead. Regardless of how you, what you thought happened in that first round, I believe he is ahead in this contest. He's getting stronger. I think in his corner, they're just going to tell him, keep doing what you're doing because you are working. Phil, any advice? You'd give Eskareyev if you were in his corner? Just lateral movement, work behind your jab. Have an uppercut loaded because I think you will see an inevitable takedown from Kubanichbek, but he's just such a difficult fighter to prepare for, to game plan for. He is that X factor, that unknown quantity. Just a different type of a fighter is Kubanichbek. Kubanichbek too, as we've seen in that first round. He got, he's not Superman, he's a human being. This is a fight between two men. He gets in dangerous positions, but emotionally, doesn't break at all. Does not seem flustered by the fact that things weren't always going his way. And now, now they are. And this is the first time in the professional career of Oyas Eskariev that he has gone to the championship round. So this is uncharted territory for him. And Brave Nation, it's very difficult to communicate how tough these championship rounds are. Both, both men look pretty fresh. Both men still look in shape and ready to go. Neither welting, neither relenting, neither giving space. You always just feel that Cuban each back is waiting for something. Olyas has slowed just slightly. Understandably so. When each back just pressing forward, showing the right hand. When each back distance managing that very effectively. Oh, beautiful uppercut again. Landed more so on the gloves, but the threat of it is there. Next shot, is, next shot that lands with the hands is likely to be followed up. Oh, another shot. A little clash of heads again there, but... It's, oh, big Wobble. shot over the top. At this point, Omak does not want to start wrestling. No, he's he does not want to start wrestling. He wants to keep striking. He's doing the right thing. Maintaining distance. Big elbow again. Eskarayev calls his opponent in, but he's unsteady on his feet. Oh, beautiful uppercut again. And this is the more calculated approach that we called for at the beginning of the broadcast picking the shots not just ferocity for the sake of it but controlled calculated aggression Omak has a long time left in this round he is planning to finish this fight in this round brave nation oh elbows to the side of the dome from Kubanichbek Kubanichbek has a very clear runway to land now has that wrist control which is opening up the space for him exposing the head of Iskariev and he doesn't need to land knockout punches here. He just needs to land frequency high shots. Skaryev, much to his credit, is trying everything he can to keep himself in this fight. Kubanichbek trying to pull his opponent away slightly so that he can sink down into mount, as you've seen there. The horrible thing about fighting Omak is you're getting punched in the face no matter what happens. Positions part way there, punched in the face. Positions all the way there, punched in the face. Omak got a little high, beautiful reversal. Full half of a round. Slightly paradoxical to say a full half of a round, but you know what I mean, Brave Nation. Half of a round left, trapping the arm. This would be absolutely huge if Iskariev were to pull off the victory here.
Thinking about switching to that stretch. Both of these guys are toughness incarnate, but Koban Ichbek sneaks out. Feel like I could barely breathe there. That was an absolutely unbelievable moment. Again, the, the tension is absolutely palpable here. The Uzbek fans are on the edge of their seat. Brave Nation, this we are in Uzbekistan. This is a wrestling culture. It is a combat sports culture. These fight fans know exactly what they're seeing and they are deeply appreciative. Nice shot to the midsection from Kuban Ichbek. Just sidestep his way to back. Looking maybe for a one on one, use that leverage to bring the opponent back. May lace up the legs here, may even just try and run it out to get into the fifth round. I think he may be feeling a scar. He have start to tire, which was slightly, which. Legs are shelved now. Skaryev trying to work that leg out without sacrificing the arms he's using to protect his head. As the hands connected and he's just forcing Skaryev to carry his weight. Referee Dick Larkin calling for a little bit more action. And he gets and it. He's getting a little bit more action. His opponent's corner knows it. Eskarev's corner has got to fire the... Yep, round. And as you alluded to, Kerry, the corner of Eskarev have to be telling him you need to go out there, give it everything you've got with your shield or on your sword kind of approach because he needs to finish if he wants to be crowned the interim lightweight champion of the world. On the transverse of that, you just tell Kuban Ichbek if you're in his corner to adopt the same approach, keep things smart, maintain your positional dominance, your positional control, land your shots and should an opportunity present itself, take it. The one thing Kuban Ichbek does not want to do is change a thing. He is now dominating the One of these fighters is five minutes or less from interim glory. For the final time tonight, these fighters embrace in the middle of the cage. Five minutes to dictate who we will crown. The interim lightweight champion of the world setting himself up for an inevitable collision course with our champion Ahmed Amir. Takedown attempt, takedown scored by Askariev. Askariev now needs to get past those legs. He needs to pass that guard. Ground and pound, not likely to win him this fight. No, he needs to go to work. For off the hips needs to be where he's getting his back taken again here there it is the back take from being inside the guard to the back take that is the mma intellect of abdi salam kuban each back body triangles in place leg is laced gonna be very very hard for olias eskarev to get out of here he has successfully any number of times now he definitely has it in him 
but quite simply Kirik's survival is not enough for him to take the win and indeed the championship. Kumanich Beck now appears intent on securing a submission. He's throwing some little shots to the face, not to win favor with the judges, but to try and get his opponent to make a little mistake. Right now, Oskarayev is not. He's driving back. Brave Nation, if there's a little bit of space between your hips and your opponent's back, it's fairly easy, relatively easy to get that choke in. When the opponent is right tight up against you, head almost even with yours, it's very, you, don't, you lack the leverage to get your full strength behind that choke, behind that squeeze. He's doing everything he can to sneak it in. But Iskariev, like, it's incredible that Iskariev, potentially, if it continues this way and he loses the fight, he has enhanced his reputation on the international stage. Undoubtedly so. Absolutely no question in my mind. Win, lose, or draw. I want to see Olyas Iskariev again and soon. more so defensive for again the brave nation when that head when the fighter who has his back taken has his head up nice and high very close to his opponent's head very hard to get the choke in half nelson momentarily by kubanich beck kubanich beck has a mighty squeeze he can go from oh skaryev once again turns in to Kuba and each pick. This is incredible Absolutely stuff. Absolutely fantastic show of fortitude and technique. But right now he has one minute, 35 seconds with which to work, with which to finish Kuba and each pick, with which to become the interim lightweight champion of the world. Can he do it? He cannot do it inside his opponent's closed guard. Needs to roll those wrists inside to free them up. There's one. But Kuba and each pick surely knows that all he needs to do is hold on in this situation. He may know it, but riding out a W is not his style. Mm. He's going to dance with a gal at Brungham. And that was being a very aggressive fighter, aggressive wrestler, aggressive kicker, aggressive striker, aggressive with the submissions. Both these fighters showing that they are absolute cardio machines. Kubanich Beck opened those feet. He could have stayed Kimura. inside it. Now he's looking for a submission. Kimura At attempts. the beginnings of a key lock. He released it, but he's going to be looking for something else. Oh, transition into side control from Iskariev. Very impressive. Really needs to go to work with elbows or something here. Again, Kubanich Beck is just so smart knowing exactly what he needs to do to shut down the offense of Iskariev to prevent him from landing those big strikes. Such intelligent work from Abdi Salam Kubanich Beck. Very, very short time, Brave Nation. There, there we have it. That final beautiful gong. Fantastic fight. Both men showed incredible heart, incredible desire, incredible technical ability. in an amazing main event. After five rounds, we draw the judges' scorecards. All three judges scored about a unanimous decision victory. And new Brave Combat Federation interim lightweight champion, Adi Salam Amak Kupa!